All right, I am back. Hey guys, I left for a little trip over the weekend and all I managed to get recorded before leaving for that trip was the three videos that you saw prior to this one. So there was not enough time for me to record the final two games. It is now Monday when I'm recording this, maybe when you're watching it as well, if I can get it up fast enough, but now I finally have time after my work shift is done to actually record these games. So game seven of the series between Wigglytuff's Guild and Trick of Eye for week two of the DPL. And we have myself, Aster, taking on TJ. And TJ is somebody pretty well known in the community, kind of the, uh, the Smogon representative in the draft community, and has been with the DPL for quite a while. He's an admin, He's, he does a lot of stuff for a lot of different groups, so. Uh, shout outs TJ and uh, he has a sun team that he's piloting from uh, from Trick of Eye and it's got a lot of really big threats Terra and Amaris for example with Terra Fairy very very scary Terra Venusaur as well in the sun so that's kind of uh, spooky and I did not expect the Dustnor to show up this game but it did come and uh, I didn't know what to make of it on team preview but I'm using our Swish 2 draft and as you can see uh, we have uh, some interesting mons to round out this team uh, Iron Jugulus, Fortress and uh, Luxray not known as like the best draft mons we might be looking into making some transactions with this team I won't say too much but yeah it's uh, it's not the best but we had a pretty good game plan going to this uh, we have uh, an assault vest Garchomp for this uh, this matchup but F U C uh, to really take on the sun components on the opposing team and uh, we have uh, Cinderace which outspeeds non scar variants of both uh, enamorous and speed ties with the roaring moon so that's nice as long as it's not speed boosting it also always ties the Cinderace and we got Terra Ogre Pond Wellspring and Terra Flying on Deancey this game. I thought Terra Flying looked really good. And as you can see, there's no Steel type in sight on the other side. So Terra Flying actually works out really well here. And uh, if we can get it off, of course. So here goes the game. Of course, uh, the series score, as you can see, is 4-2, meaning that if we win this, we secure the week. And that's it. No more having to worry about uh, the last game. Like we obviously want to win it, but we we would at the very least get a win out of the week, which would be great. So I'm going to lead off with Cinderace. My opponent is going to lead off with Roaring Moon, and I'm actually going to stay in here on the uh, Roaring Moon and go for a U-turn, which is not something that I had really done in practice um, in mocks and stuff. I was mainly switching out to Fortress whenever Moon was in, but I figured, hey, there's enough times that uh, win the speed tie, this can this can only really kill me if it's banded Earthquake and it wins the speed tie, so I'm like, ah, you know what, I'm, I'm just gonna go for a U-turn. And TJ switches out to Ninetales, and the Ninetales is uh, a Jack button. And it gets hit uh, and switches out into Enamorous, and I'm like, Okay, uh, Enamorous is here. If it's Scarfed, uh, I take, like, I believe 99% from Terra Fairy Moonblast, like, just on the cusp of dying. And if it's anything else, I outspeed. So I'm gonna stay in and I'm gonna go for Pyroball. And uh, I go for Pyroball, he tears into a Fairy type and takes 65% and Moonblasts me and I die. And this confirms to me that this is Specs. So now I'm dealing with a, a Specs and Amorous, and I, I no longer have my fastest member, but it's okay. I still have my Ogre Pond, uh, which can outspeed this. So going to Ogre Pond, I know Venusaur is coming in because it's a really good check to Ogre, Ogre Pond stabs, but I just go for the Ivy Cudgel anyway, just in case. Uh, I don't want to accidentally U-turn on a Specs Terra Fairy and Amorous and uh, basically have something else die because everything else on the team would die. <laughs> so uh, we're going to go out into Uxie on the Venusaur. It's going to go for Solar Beam. It's not going to do too much, 37%. We are quite sped up, and that is a Life Orb hit as well. And uh, Uxie is going to be able to, I believe, get up rocks here. Uh, no, we go for a T-Wave. So we paralyze the Enamorous. Sun goes away. And uh, now we get up rocks. And it goes for a Moonblast and does 68%. Uh, Specs Terra Fairy is crazy. Uh, then we go for Psychic Noise and we bring it down to 11. So it's now doubt dead to rocks despite losing the flying typing. And uh, it's going to break through paralysis again. And down goes our Uxie. But this is okay. Now uh, we also have Garchomp that outspeeds the Enamorous. Uh, so that's, that's quite nice. So... Ninetales is going to switch in on Ogre Pond as we go for the Ivy Cudgel again and bring down the Ninetales to 5%. Now we're going to U-turn and I'm going to position my Garchomp this turn. And uh, TJ goes into Venusaur and this is kind of what I expected. Solar Beam comes out. I take 39. We are AV and we go for the Fire Fang and we knock out the Venusaur. So down goes that. Cool. Now, Roaring Moon comes in. Now, of course, 
this thing is faster than me. It goes for a dragon move. It knocks me out. So I'm going to switch out into my fortress. And uh, no, I'm not. I'm going to stay in with my guard shot <laughs> and take a scale shot. Uh, because if Sturdy gets broken, I die to like flamethrower or fire fang after. So I can't really risk going into fortress. Now, I could have risked going into Yancey, but this thing is attack boosting. Meaning if it clicks anything other than a dragon move this turn and just like obliterates my Deancey, then I lose my other Terramon, and that could be really bad. I'm still staring at a Dustmore, and I don't know what it is yet, uh, and I'm, I'm not sure what the other Mons are either. Uh, well, I know what the Enamorous is, but I don't know what the Blastoise is. So I take the Scale Shot, I die. We're going to now go into Fortress. This thing is a minus one defense, so Body Press is easily going to pick up the KO. We do get Fire Fanged. Luckily, we don't get flinched here. Uh, Rocky Helmet Prox takes 16%. We go for Body Press. Now, Blastoise comes in. Okay. Blastoise comes in and I'm like, okay, cool. Uh, I'm not going to go hard into Ogre Pond because this thing could pretty much like click anything. Uh, I'm just going to go for a Volt Switch. Uh, and it goes for Shell Smash and I don't see White Herb. So I'm like, okay. So this thing could be a boosting item. Um, like Life Orb or something, right? And I look through Blastoise's special move pool, nothing can really hit Ogre Pond. I look through its physical move pool, I don't see anything super effective. So I'm like, okay, so what am I getting hit with here? I go into Ogre Pond, and I think for a second, and I'm like, okay, well, I can at least scout it because I have Protect. Now, Protect, um, <laughs> if you don't know, is not the optimal move to run on Ogre Pond because Ogre Pond gets Spiky Shield. And right here, Double Edge comes out. And this thing would have taken 16%. Uh, and then I could have switched into Fortress and it would have taken another 16%. Uh, actually, I think uh, Spiky Shield does 12. I think it's the equivalent of Iron Barbs, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and then it would have taken 16 from the Rocky Helmet, plus the very minimal recoil from the double edge again. Uh, and I would have been more comfortable switching out into my fortress, um, but there's the real threat here of TJ shell smashing again. And if TJ shell smashes again, then I just get instantly swept. But double edge should not kill me. Naturally, it just should not kill me. So I decide it's fine. I'm going to stay in. I know I haven't seen an item yet. I should be all right though. But it pops normal gem and Ogre Pond dies. And it takes a bunch of recoil, but I go to Yancey and then I tear into a flying type and Wave Crash comes out and the Blastoise still does not die to recoil. <laughs> So I get caught off by a physical uh, shell smash Blastoise. And what's funny is that um, the recoil put him exactly into Torrent. And I think without that, Wave Crash doesn't actually kill TNC once I Terra. Um, and yeah, that was just very unfortunate. Uh, and I'm going to sack my fortress to Aqua Jet. A TJ should not have clicked Aqua Jet here. I uh, shouldn't have revealed the last move because now I know for the future, if we ever have this rematch, there's a good chance that this thing is carrying uh, just normal and water so I can play in accordance. So that's something that he should have been a little bit more mindful of. But of course, we do take the L here. Uh, this sucked uh, because I thought I was going to just uh, secure the the week for my team. And that is not what happened. We never got to see what the Dust Noir was. I'm assuming it was Choice Band with Poltergeist and Shadow Sneak. Um, just based on my team uh, and not having really good resists. Like Iron Jugulus is the dark type, not a great resist. And everything else kind of has to hold an item in this matchup. So, and can't really burn them off either. And Ogre Pond's always holding an item, right? So Poltergeist is completely free. So I think it was banded. I would have had to, one, have Spiky Shield, two, Sacked Fortress, and then three, played another 50-50 with the Ogre Pond on spiky shield versus, well, actually the thing is, if I would have sacked Fortress, uh, instead of being worried about the second shell smash, then the white, the normal gem would have been burned and then double edge would not have KO'd me in the follow-up. So my Ogre Pond would have still been alive and then the Enamorous cannot revenge me because it's paralyzed and dead to rocks. Um, mo most importantly, it's dead to rocks. If the Dust Noir comes in, 
it has to revenge me with Shadow Sneak where it takes too much damage, and then it's locked into Shadow Sneak. They have to switch out as my Deancey can potentially set up, right? Uh, we didn't actually get to see the Deancey set, but it, it was probably set up, right, with Terra Flying, um, to give you an idea. So, yeah. Um, now, there is a chance that Deancey just straight up died to Bandit Poltergeist, Poltergeist regardless, uh, even from full. So, I think that TJ played this very well, and I don't completely fault myself for how I played. I don't completely fault uh, the prep that we put in during the week. What I do fault is us not looking deeper into the matchup. We just scratched the surface here, and I think that we could have we gotten more information from Mox. Uh, in the future, we will be looking at Shell, Shell Smash Blastoise as a possibility, as an offensive piece, as opposed to just a defensive piece into, like, Cinderace, right? So, yeah, that's uh, unfortunate, but we now go down four to... Th we're now up, sorry, four to three, <laughs> and uh, we have one game left, and it's Pyronox versus... Greg, Gregulator60. So let's check that out. All right, so here we are now. Looking at this matchup, Celesteela looks very scary for us. Cloyster was another thing that looked quite scary on preview. We haven't seen it too much in Mox, but we did know that it was a very real possibility. Victini's kind of checked by Altaria. Latios isn't that big of a problem, right? We have Empoleon, etc. So it's, uh, it, it's okay, but... I think the big, big issue is like an offensive Celesteel here and even like Calm Mind Sableye, uh, Mega Sableye can be quite annoying. Uh, we wanted to take advantage of the Nido Queen, and you'll see how we did that. So here we go. Let's check out the game. So we have uh, Mega Altaria leading off against Victini. And Pyro's immediately going to switch out on Final Gambit and sack Mew. So he had a feeling that it was Final Gambit from the way that it led. Uh, and disposing of Altaria would be pretty big for them because then there's not much for Sableye. So Pyro decides to sack the Mew. Now, there were other possible sacks here. Like, for example, I don't think Torn looks that good into the remainder of the team. However, we have no information on the Victini, and that can be a complete bluff of a lead. And it could just go for V Create or U Turn, in which case you just switched out your perfect Victini switch in into uh into going into tornadoes and taking like 80. so yeah it's uh it's not the most comfortable of lead situations and i fully understand pyro's decision to sack mew but mew did look very good here like once the victini is gone mew actually looks insane so like just think about any potential mew set that you could have into this team and you can pretty much figure it out like there's there's a lot of stuff that Mew can do into the remaining five so now we have Nido King versus the Latios, and kind of once again we're forced out. So we go in Polion on Ice Beam, take six percent, so that's fine. Uh, then we take a Thunderbolt 49, and we go for Knock Off. Now that Thunderbolt did a little too much for my liking. I think that we could have been EV'd a little bit differently to be able to dig that better. Uh, and now we're going to switch out into Tornadus on Electrium Z, Gigavolt Havoc, and it knocks out our Torn. So we could have had. Uh, a Mew here in this situation because as you can see this Latios is actually not that like threatening into Mew because it doesn't even have stabs like it's not it's not rocking with stabs it's rocking bolt beam like there's still a chance that it has a dragon move but even then like I think that Mew can handle that but now we lose our torn and our Mew so now we're working with Altaria essentially for the remainder of the game so uh, in comes Nidoqueen Altaria goes for a hyper voice here and it's going to do 30% to the uh, Nidoqueen and then we're going to go for a Draco Meteor and we're actually going to crit the Nidoqueen and knock it out uh, now I'm pretty sure that that was a roll in our favor I think it did like min 67 uh, from from this spread of Nidoqueen based on the hyper voice damage I can't be 100% certain but uh, there, there's a very good chance that we still knocked it out anyway, even without the crit. So, uh, now the Cloister comes in. Now, of course, we're minus two, so this is threatening. We go for Hyper Voice. It goes for a Shell Smash. And now, at this point, we have to once again sack him on, and that's going to be Empoleon to the Icicle Spear. And uh, Spear does what it does best. Of course, hit five times thanks to Skill Link, uh, and it does enough to put us in range of the next one, of course. So, down goes our Empoleon. And now, the only way that we can deal with this is uh, through priority, means of priority. So we go into Terrakion, we go for Quick Attack, does 25%, Natural Gift knocks us out, 
and uh, I'm not sure which nat natural gift that was. It was probably ground, if I had to guess, uh, based on the fact that Cloyster really, really wants to run Drill Run in this matchup because of Empoleon, uh, and it didn't have to click it until then, but then it does into our... Uh, Terrakion, obviously, to knock it out. Probably wasn't carrying a water move, if I had to guess. Uh, now, Nidoking comes in and goes for Sucker Punch and is going to knock out the Cloister. So now it's 2v3, and uh, the Latios is at 68, and uh, we take some Life Orb Chip. Sableye comes in. We're going to switch out into Altaria, I believe, here. No, nope, we're going to go for Fire Blast to get Chip, chip off on the uh, Sableye, because the Sableye is not a huge threat into our Nidoking. And then we get off a of Sucker Punch, and we actually knock out the Latios. So now it's 2-2, two two, and Nidoking is looking very threatening here. So... Uh, I believe Nino King is going to switch out this turn into the Altaria. The Sableye goes for a Calm Mind this time and now switches into the Celesteela. We go for Hyper Voice. We're able to do 18% to the Celi. And then we are going to switch out into Nino King on Leech Seed. And uh, the seeds chip us a little bit. We go down to 68. Then we go for a Fire Blast as Protect comes out. And now we're going to Fire Blast again. Now, Greg can easily switch out into Sableye here on the uh, Fire Blast, but chooses instead to eat it uh, and takes 68% from Life Orb Fire Blast, goes for Heavy Slam and gets the Spit F raise. And now Greg is going to click, I believe, Protect here this turn. Does click Protect. We go for Fire Blast with Altaria. Cool. And right here, the play, if you're Greg, is to go for Leech Seed. That is your best play because you can Leech Protect then you can switch into Sableye on a Fire Blast. Then you can come back on a Hyper Voice. You can play around the Altaria. The absolute worst thing you can do is click Heavy Slam. And our Fire Blast hits does 32%. Heavy Slam hits, and we live on 9. So all we need to do is hit the Selly one more time, and then Hyper Voice wins the game after a nice and safe roost on the Sableye. But that's not what happens. Instead, we miss the Fire Blast. Greg didn't even try to protect. I guess not wanting to give us a Roost turn, uh, but at that point you can't really Roost as Altaria. Instead, he just clicks Heavy Slam again, and the series is over and tied 4-4. So, uh, I don't agree with the endgame plays there. Uh, I think that Greg had played that very well up until that point. Uh, however, I think he choked this endgame and didn't get punished for it. Uh, and definitely should have leech seeded initially, then protected, and then gone from there. Having already seen three moves on Altaria, uh, three special moves, it's not going to be set up. You have no setup to worry about, so all you have to do is go for the leech seed. You know that Heavy Slam has a chance not to kill, uh, and a very good one at that, if we're correctly EV'd, so... I don't agree with the play, but anyway, not to harp on Greg. Uh, Greg's just coming back into the into the scene uh, and playing a little bit now. So, uh, and joined the DPL this season when every other season he was like troll joining teams. So, uh, but yeah, that that is a loss for us, unfortunately, and that does put us at a four to four record against uh, Trick of Eye. So now we're eight and eight overall in the season, and uh, yeah, no, it's uh, it doesn't feel great uh, to to go eight and eight. Uh, and have two draws moving into week three, but I still do feel confident about this team. I think that we can turn it around. I think that I can play better. I think that I should stay out of Scarlet and Violet <laughs> as well, possibly. Uh, and I think that a few of our teams need improvement, but we won't be able to do that till after week three. So now moving forward, moving into week three, we have to find a way to get a win because three draws moving into the latter half of the season is not going to be good. Even worse, uh, two draws and a loss. So we can't have that and we need to shape up from here. So this was still a great series overall. GG's to Trick of Eye. They have a great team and uh, you're probably going to see more of them in playoffs because I expect them to make playoffs. It's possible that they don't because they're in the same situation as us actually. They also had a draw week one. So that's two draws for them. But uh, in any case, thank you so much for watching guys. I really do appreciate it. If you guys do enjoy these videos, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, as always, if you haven't already, if this is your first time on the channel or otherwise, so that you don't miss a single one of these DPL videos. Week three videos will commence on Thursday, so make sure you're here for that, and I will see you guys then. Peace out.